Yo, what is up, G Crew? I'm Chris G, bringing you guys another video, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to stabilize your drone time lapses. So, without further ado, let's get started. So that video was for my church when we did our groundbreaking announcement. And uh, yeah, so let's get started with the time-lapse tutorial. So first thing we're gonna do is actually open up After Effects. So I need to go to my Creative Cloud and then I'm gonna open up After Effects. So the reason why we need to go to After Effects is because we're not only gonna use um, the stabilizing, uh, the warp stabilizer, we're also gonna use motion tracking. So. That is going to be another element into our video that's going to make it that much better. So just stay tuned for that as it loads because it's taking a while. Cool. All right. So what we're going to do now is hit OK here, get rid of this warning sign about my disk cache being full. Uh, so, oh my goodness. Okay. So we're going to open up, open up a new comp. We're gonna make it 24 frames, and that should be fine. And then what we're gonna do here is hit OK, and then we're gonna take off caps lock because we don't need that. And then what we're gonna do now is go to our project. We're gonna import the files that we need. So if you have a drone, um, you'll notice that you have a time lapse mode. So I'm not gonna show you guys how to do a time lapse with the drone itself. Maybe I can do that for a future video. So just let me know down below. So yeah, but once you've already taken the pictures and you try to put it into a time lapse, you'll notice that it's very shaky and very wobbly and it's kind of very jittery. So we're gonna fix that. So right here, I have all the pictures. Um, I'm just go to my church. I have a bunch of files, guys, don't worry about that. And I already edited the photos, so these are the original shots right here. But if I come over here, you'll see I have my JPEG shots. So if you haven't seen already how I, um, imported a bunch of files you can go see my hyperlapse video i'll put that in the link in the description below so yeah but just a quick overview pretty much i'm just going to select the first footage and then i'm going to force alphabetical order and then i'm going to import it so what it's going to do now is it's going to make it as a video so as it's going it's it's going as a video so anyway so i'm going to upscale it right here just so that way i can match it to the frame so about, let's say 37, does that work? I mean 35, let's see. Okay, 35 is a little bit too small, I'm gonna do 35.3, and that barely covers everything. So sick, sweet, first thing is done. So if we were to check it out right now, see, that's cool, it's a cool time lapse, you know, the idea is there, but um, it's not ideal. Okay, we can make it, we can make it pretty clean. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into into the footage, we're gonna right click it, and we're gonna put track and stabilize, and we're gonna track motion. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in, like so, and H on my keyboard so that way I can drag it, and hit V again. I'm gonna put this on the top of that point right there, so that way I have a reference point. So once I've done that for the first frame, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, um, let's see, I, I almost kind of forgot how to do this. So I'm kind of doing this as I go because I pretty much know how this goes already. Stabilize motion, no, track motion is what I want to do. Did I just do two of them? Yeah, didn't mean to do that. So what we're gonna do is select this one, cool. And then we're gonna hit play. And usually it'll do a decent job. So as you can see right now, it's doing a fantastic job tracking it. And I'm actually very, <laughs> I'm actually very surprised it's it's tracking it pretty well. Usually you have to change the scale of the, the four pins around it, but it's honestly already halfway done. <laughs> and I'm actually freaking out live right now. 
how awesome it's doing. So it came off screen, that's because I'm zoomed in. Seeing how well it's been doing, it's insane. But you can see it started off right here and it went off. So I'm going in blind boys and girls that are watching. So I'm gonna actually hit H on my keyboard. So it looks like it stuck, stuck all the way through. And it really did. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit, um, how do you, oof, oof. Let's see, stabilize. Okay, cool. Now, pretty much what that does is we're telling the track, what, what it, it just tracked it right now. So now we're telling it, okay, well, what do you want me to do with this information? So we're telling it, I want you to stabilize it. So that's what that means. So I'm gonna hit apply now. All right, and I'm gonna hit yes. So the options are X and Y or either or. So we're gonna hit okay. And now what you'll notice is it's a lot better, okay? So it's not as shaky, but you'll notice it's starting to crop in into the screen. So what we're gonna do to fix that is we're gonna see how far it is off the screen. And then what we'll do is we'll compensate for that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put this away. We're gonna go to transform. And we're gonna upscale it to 40%. Psych, 30% um, over here, and uh, let's see, let's just play with it, let's see what we can do. So move it here, we'll move the positioning around, and we'll see how that looks, and we'll see, okay, so now it's way over here, so we're going to have to scale in quite a bit, so maybe 40% is the go-to, right, so right there, skim through it, and all of, all of the frame is on it the whole time, so it's clean. So now what we'll do is we're going to pre-compose this shot because I don't want to mess with the tracking that I just did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this, I'm going to hit pre-compose and pretty much what this means is I'm making a separate clip. While I'm making all of that, all the, that effect that I just added which is the tracking, I'm going to make that a part of the clip and making it a pre-composition -comp is going to say pretty much that it's a fresh clip but it's already included. So it's pretty much all you got to do is hit... Um, Hold on, let me figure this out. <laughs> I think leave all attributes, so let me see if it's there. Okay, no, so I'm gonna hit Control Z. What you wanna do is make that pre-composition, and you wanna hit move all attributes, so that way all the information goes inside the, the pre-comp, um, or else it would just keep the motion tracking out, and that defeats the whole purpose of what I'm doing. So now that that's done, you'll see that the tracking thing isn't on there if I hit the down arrow. So now that that's good to go, what we're gonna do is go to click here and we're gonna hit warp stabilize. And so now what that's gonna do is it's gonna do another stabilization on its own. So usually warp stabilization does really well. I did the motion tracking first so that way it can um, pretty much, I can do the manual work and make it easier for the computer instead of having the computer guess because I've done this before. Um, obviously you saw the video, but um, and I posted it for the church. So it looks good. It's it's like completely clean, but now I'm kind of doing it the other way around. So at first I did the warp stabilization and then it helped out and then I did the motion tracking, but then it still needed another warp stabilizing. So instead of doing three steps, I'm gonna do two steps and then I'm probably gonna enhance the warp stabilization. So while all this is going on, I'm pretty much just telling you guys like the whole process of it. So I'm, I'm kind of giving it like a double whammy you know, with the motion tracking, making sure that that point in the tower is gonna stay in that specific spot the whole time. So if I were to put my mouse on that, uh, or the mouse cursor, sorry, over where it was, it's gonna stay there the whole time. And the reason why it's very jittery and shaky for the time lapse, it's because the drone's fighting the wind the whole time. So knowing that the wind is moving the drone, it's actually really not that bad. So. Props to you know DJI for making insane drones. Um, this is shot with my Mavic 2 Pro, so really cool. And um, I was going for this orange and teal kind of look. Um, I didn't want to bother editing the colors again because I really don't need to. This is that wasn't the sole purpose of the video. I'm pretty much showing you guys how to stabilize some shots. So whenever you have a drone and you're trying to you know capture um, a long moment, I shot this with one battery yeah obviously well that's not obvious um, I've shot in plenty of other time lapses with the drone some I've used four batteries with it so I get the drone I send it up for its 30 minutes or so bring it back down swap the battery and send it back in the same exact spot 
And that's kind of stressful because I need to make sure that the height's the same and that the distance is the same. So always got to keep that in mind. But for this shot, it was one battery and um, yeah, it was clean. I try to make sure that the center point was that little tower because having a reference point is going to make your video so much more smooth and it's not going to be shaky because you can always fix it in post versus if you're just shooting maybe the beach, the time lapse of the beach, that's going to be a little bit harder with the drone because you're not really going to have a reference point. So now it's done, it's stabilizing and saying, so let's see what it has so far and I might need to make some adjustments, but that's the whole purpose of this video, right? So what you can do now is we can um, pre-render it. So right now as it's loading, we can see that it's actually very smooth. You can see at the very bottom that it's not moving as much almost not at all um, right here you'll see this is actually um, my uncle's business with uh, Voltron Electric we're actually putting power right here temporary power for this property um, but yeah right now I'm just getting the clouds moving by um, all the all of the cars are going by and I just wish what just happened oh that was it so you'll see right here how smooth it is. It is insane how smooth that is. Like it's not even moving compared to how it used to be. So just to give a frame of reference, here's a silky smooth version of what we just did, right? It's not shaking at all. It's like perfect. And then this is the original time lapse without any stabilization. And yes, seeing you know this on its own, like yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, if you're not aware of like what the potential can, can be, but then when you see this, it's like, oh, dang, that's like, it's clean. Well, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something new. I know this video wasn't for everybody, but those of you with drones, let me know down below if this is something that you'd be willing to try. I know it can be intimidating with the wind and just the timing and everything. It's just so many factors when it comes to drones. So go for it. I mean, this just goes to show that you can have silky smooth time lapses even with the drone. So have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this. Please comment and subscribe. Peace.